Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard and today we're going to do the walk around of the options on my 458 Spider. So to be able to do these options, I've got all the options on my phone. I've had to do some research to actually decrypt some of the, some of the options. Um, th these are the original options for the car, obviously. So I've had to decrypt some of the options to actually understand what they are. For a start, some of them were actually in Italian, which isn't that hard to decrypt them, but then they convert into an English, which actually means something to the Italians or to the, to the um, Ferrari team, but means nothing to us. So I've had to find out, research exactly what they relate to. So this could be useful to, to other 458 owners as well, or hopefully it will be useful. So let's start from the beginning of the list of the options. So first of all, we have the AFS system. Now what AFS stands for is Advanced Front Lighting System. Now, obviously this is the headlights, but that tells you nothing, me pointing to the headlights, because what it actually means is this central headlight is self-leveling. What that relates to is when the, when the car goes up and down or when it moves left and right, the actual lights move with the steering and they self-level with the height of the car, which is pretty cool. And when you're actually driving at night, I've driven this once at night, it works exceptionally well. Not only are the lights are bright, and I'm very conscious of that because when I'm in my own, when, when I'm in my daily drive, I'm very conscious of when people have very bright lights and it's, it blinds you. So I'm very conscious of that. So I am aware of that, um, unlike a lot of other people. Um, the lights do actually follow you around the corners. It's very useful. You go around roundabouts and as you turn the steering wheel, it shows you where you're going to, um, which is very clever. It's a, it's a great system. It works really, really well. Now, I'll get onto this in a little bit more detail later, but you can't have lift without AFS. Again, more on that later. The second option we have on the options list is yellow brake calipers. Now, this is very obvious. Of course, it's being, they're colored in yellow. I think the standard option is gray or black. Actually, gray might be an option too. I mean, pretty much Ferrari charge for everything. So uh, you have to pay for yellow brake calipers. I don't know how much it is, but it's probably quite expensive, probably eye-watering known Ferrari. Now the next option um, is suspension lifter. So in effect, as I said, it aligns with the actual automatic advanced front lighting system. Because lift increases the height of the car, you have to have the advanced lighting system so that the auto leveling of the lights auto levels the lights if you've got the lights on when you have lift when you have lift on so when you have the car raised with lift you obviously the lights have to be um, dropped down a bit to take in a, take into account that the car is higher um, if you've got lift on switched on on the car then um, over anything 25 miles an hour and over the lift will automatically come down so it makes you wonder if that's really essential for them to force you to have to have the advanced light leveling system on the car to have lift because it's very expensive having the two of them together so the next option we have outer carbon fiber b post in carbon that's a nice obvious one that's these i think i, I don't think i've seen many 458s actually without this option so it's a very common option but nonetheless it's uh, it looks really nice and, and it's quite an important option next we come to carbon fiber rear molding again a nice easy option with the 360s and obviously the Challenge Stradale, the Challenge Stradale on the 360 had what they called a Challenge Grill on the back. Now this is, this is trying to take you back to the, to the look of the Challenge Grill to some level. Now obviously the Challenge Grill was this type of material, was in this black, like enameled mesh material on the, on the 360. But this is trying to give you that sort of option where you've got a, a different option that you can spec to give you a carbon fiber um, rear, rear section where the Challenge Stradale grill would have been. And uh, otherwise, you know, if you don't spec this option in carbon fiber, then it's the normal body color of the car, so it'd be red, which actually does look, look all right as well. There's no issues with that. It just looks a bit more sportier. The carbon fiber, in effect, gives you a sportier spec. The so next option we have now, this is an interesting one high emotion low emissions so just ahead of the rear view mirror there's a button um, on the roof of section of the car 
and that button actually switches stop start on so it is just stop start so you back in the day you could actually i think it was a, a legal requirement that you could spec um, stop start as an option so i believe nowadays you have to have stop start optioned on the car automatically it's it has to be configured with the car um, so stop start is automatically on modern cars and to actually switch, switch stop start to switch stop start off on modern cars you have to physically toggle it off every single time you start the car so every time you switch the ignition on um, then you have to actually toggle stop start off if you don't want it on whereas with this car it was of the day when you had to have stop start or you sorry it was of the day when you could option stop start but you could switch it off and when you toggled it off on the car it stayed latched that setting stayed latched and by that I mean that it stayed off so then you'd physically have to switch it on now I have I have actually used stop start it is quite useful in stop go traffic so if you're in busy stop go traffic just flick stop start on then after two to three minutes it will automatically start stopping um, when you actually physically stop the car and then when you take your foot off the brake it'll start the engine up again and it puts it into like a, a, a a stasis, a state of stasis where the car um, just sort of, um, well, it's obviously it switches the engine off, but it's designed in such a way that the engine will fire up very quickly again. So it's just sort of put it into pause mode um, without it actually firing, which is pretty cool. If you've got stop start on your car, you'll know what I'm talking about with the difference. So yeah, quite bizarre that you could actually option, option stop start on a, on a Ferrari, you know? I mean, <laughs> who's looking to save the world when you buy a Ferrari? So the next option um, is a bone of contention for me and it is for many other people as well. Um, you have to option Scuderia Ferrari shields. So to actually have these on the car, now what Ferrari doesn't have these on? Very, very rarely will you, will you find a Ferrari that doesn't have the Scuderia shields on the wings. Um, but you still have to pay extra for it. You shouldn't have to pay extra. You can always tell that when, an actually, when a car has had the Ferrari shields fitted on, um, post manufacture because if it's if it's for manufacture um, the actual wings especially have this recess for the badge to be fitted so they actually are different wings they're actually different wings or fenders as they call them in America now I believe you can actually get the well you can get the different wings put on the car um, with this recess so you can fit the shields on but it, you, to do it properly you're into putting new wings on the car and of course paying for the badges as well so it's quite a comprehensive cost but nonetheless, you, you can actually have it fitted post-manufacture. And the next option is internal and external electrochromatic mirrors. Again, quite a simple one to explain. Wing uh, door mirrors and the actual rear view mirror inside. Um, if you have bright lights and, and the electrochromatic system is switched on, if you have bright lights hitting the actual glass, then it will actually dim the reflection to the actual person to looking through in, into the actual whether it be the wing mirror or door, whether you'd be looking into the door mirror or the actual rear view mirror so it dulls the, the brightness of the light so it's it's not dazzling you which is which is quite a cool option and one that is fitted and uh, on this car and one that's fitted on this car and as i say it's operate operational on both the internal and external by internal and external it means external the door mirrors internal the actual rear view mirror so next we have parking camera again quite an obvious one we move to the back of the car the parking camera is fitted and it's recessed into the rear bumper i actually don't use this this rear view camera very much i've got to learn to use it better and to trust it more but i tend to trust the door mirrors that's just how i've become used to driving i trust the door mirrors a lot more um, but the parking mirror gives you a good, good a clear image in the actual right hand screen if you don't have this parking mirror then it's about a £10,000 option to have it fitted post manufacture and the reason for that is because Ferrari insists you have a new rear bumper you have to have a whole new rear bumper and of course the actual rear parking camera system which means you have to have new rear bumper the rear bumper has to be painted and yeah then you have to have the actual rear parking camera and the electronics fitted in so probably it's a new screen as well or or probably the connectivity into the actual right hand screen so it's a hell of a hell of a cost cost option post manufacturer i'm not sure how much it was actually for manufacturer um, and like i say it, it does give you a good perspective of the actual rear of the car i've got to learn to use it more um, and one of the other one of the downsides of it is that the where it's displayed in the right hand screen you've got a screen that's about uh four to five inches by yeah about four to five inches square and it's quite small and if you've got a bright summer's day and i only I only drive this on a nice day 
then you've got that sun reflecting onto the onto the TFT panel or, or the LCD, whichever one it is. And of course, that's going to that's going to cause a lot of reflection and you can't see the actual um, display very well. So, you know, from that point of view, it's not that great. Next, we move on to parking sensors. Again, another obvious one. We have parking sensors. They used to be called warts. We used to nickname them warts back in the day when these parking sensors first came out. We put parking sensors into the rear bumper, which emit that lovely, lovely high-pitched tone when you get close to an object, which we all love. And obviously in the front, so it's front and rear parking sensors. So as we come around to the front, we've got the same warts designed and same parking sensors in the front bumper. Next on the list, we have 20 inch force painted rims. Now, originally these, these rims were this color, which is Argento Nürburgring ring silver. So originally they were, they were silver. The person before me had them painted black and he had this side sill wrapped in black as well i've taken it back to standard so i've had the when i had the car ppf i had the side silk wrapping taken off the black wrapping taken off and i had the wheels changed back to silver as well and i think it just looks a lot better you could say that this car has a classic spec with regards to the outside the external of the car and a sporty spec with regards to the internal of the car the next item is tire pressure management system now, tire pressure management system in effect means that each wheel has a transmitter on it that transmits the actual pressure or um, and change of state of tire pressure to us to a receiver and the receiver is actually in the arch the wheel arch area of the car and it transmits to that receiver that receiver um, goes to a management system a tire pressure management system and that management system um, you could say that's like another ecu i mean they these cars have horrendous amount of ECUs they even have one to manage the battery um, but it, I, sus I suspect it goes to a small ECU, ECU unit um, or a time pressure management system unit and that transmits the information to the actual screen and it gives you an appreciation of the actual tire pressures of the car in addition to on or additional information on that screen by the way is the actual temperature of the tires and the temperature of the of the wheel discs um, in effect brakes which is very useful information for the track use for tracking use Next on the list, we have exterior sill kick sill plates in carbon fiber. So that's these. And that is actually a, quite a rare option, a very rare option. I believe I don't, I don't believe I've seen any other 458s with that option. It's very rare. And I believe that was a, around a, a one and a half or two to two and a half grand option just to have those seal kick plates in carbon fiber. And by the way, those actually have PPF on them now. So they have actually got PPF on them to protect them, which is quite cool. We just leave the door open actually, because the next item we've got is carbon fiber upper tunnel trim. Now, that's an interesting one. So most cars, most center cons console options, they have lever down the side of the console. And um, when the actual center of the car, when the, when the center of the console is carbon fiber, they have lever down the sides. With this car, the person who spec this car actually spec a very rare option. I have again, I haven't seen this option in any other 458s, and that is instead of having leather down the side, they spec carbon fiber. So the whole console is in carbon fiber. Even the actual side strips were, which are on most 458s, actually in leather, which is pretty cool. Again, segregates my car out from others. Which, um, if and when I do come to sell it at some point in the future, it makes it that perceivably that little bit more desirable if people want that sort of option, of course. Now next is, is linked into that, which is the carbon fiber racing package. Now with these cars, you could spec the carbon fiber racing package, um, but you could only spec the carbon fiber racing package. And this is an interest, interesting one. You can only spec that if you spec carbon fiber racing seats. So if you spec carbon fiber racing seats, then you could, you could spec the carbon fiber racing package. It all gets very expensive, of course, all this. Now the carbon fiber racing package includes the actual steering wheel, carbon fiber steering wheel with the LEDs on the top. It includes the tachometer surround in carbon fiber. It includes carbon fiber, these carbon fiber dash inserts, which is, a, which is the inserts actually alongside the strip inserts in the, in the um, carbon, in, it's the strip inserts in the dashboard. And it includes the actual carbon fiber, includes the dash vents in carbon fiber as well. Now, in effect, 
The, the racing package incorporates the driving zone. The driving zone being the actual carbon fiber steering wheel, the carbon fiber paddles, which I missed off from that, but mine has the carbon fiber paddles. Carbon fiber steering wheel, carbon fiber paddles, and the dash surround. That's called the, that's called the carbon fiber driving zone. That's incorporated into the carbon fiber driving uh, racing package. And as I said, you can only have, you can only spec the racing package if you spec carbon fiber race seats, which of course this has which we'll get onto that in a minute, actually. I was gonna show you there, but let's not get ahead of ourselves, eh? Next item on the list is cruise control. This actually looks a very, um, with regards to its presence in the car, its physical presence in the car, it looks very diminutive because it's only a single knob option. Um, and how you actually operate that knob option is you push the knob in and hold it for a few seconds. I think it's around three to five seconds. You get an option come up on the left hand screen of the 458 and it says cruise control enabled and then what you do is you turn the knob it's got a pressure latch on it so you you, you turn it against the pressure against a, a pressure switch it doesn't latch but you hold it against a pressure switch and it increases the speed and obviously you turn it anti-clockwise to decrease the speed so that's how you adjust your speed forwards and backwards it's not radar control it's very important that people understand it's not radar control and what radar control is actually when you have a, a radar transmitter and receiver actually in the front of the car it transmits a beam to the vehicle in front or to any obstacles in front and it adjusts your distance and your speed accordingly to that vehicle so your distance stays the same from when you actually set switch the setting on um, this doesn't have radar control and it doesn't have the radar transmitter and receiver in it it has the cruise control that's manually operated so you adjust it um, slower and faster by turning against the pressure switch clockwise to go faster anti-clockwise to go slower and you can switch it off by actually push it in and um, and holding it in for three to five seconds that switches it on that toggles it on and off and you automatically switch it off when you touch the brake. It, now it doesn't switch it off totally. It leaves it there capable to be switched on um, if you've got the system switched on. And then all you have to do is just turn the knob to the right to actually switch it back on again or press it in and it will switch it back on again. If you press it and hold it, then it switches it off. So it sounds more convoluted than it actually is. It's actually quite straightforward. But it's, I find it actually quite a cool, use, useful option to have. So the next option we have is electric steering column. I thought all 458s had an electrically controlled fore and aft and up and down um, steering column, but maybe they don't. I noticed this is one of the options of my car and it's been selected. So I think I've got a feeling that all of the cars automatically came with it, but you could delete it for some reason um, and not have that option and have it manually adjustable. I know you could have the steering column manually adjustable. Why would you want to have it manually adjustable? I don't know. If it's a free option, then why would you want it manually adjustable? Maybe it was a cost option, I don't know. If, if, you, if you know whether it's a cost option or not, please drop me a comment below because it'd be very interest, interesting to know. But I know I haven't seen any 458s without electrically controlled steering columns. So, and it's very, very useful. Even when I'm leaning across and disconnecting the battery conditioner, I actually um, adjust the steering wheel up so my knees can swivel around a lot easier because I have the steering wheel a bit lower. Interestingly enough, the tachometer, because it isn't the binnacle isn't um, the binnacle isn't attached to the actual steering column, so the tachometer doesn't move the steering column. So if you have the steering column too far low or too far high, you can actually obstruct the actual view of the tachometer. So you know there is a tolerance there, obviously, but you need to get it so you can see the tachometer. That's that's the optimum setting for it. So that's the end of part one for this video. The options list on this car are quite extensive, so we decided to split them into two videos. Part two will be dropping the following week. We drop our videos every Friday at 6 p.m. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And also, if you like the video, please make sure you click the like button and give it a thumbs up. So we'll see you in the next video. Join us for part two.